All right, guys, we're back at it. We obviously had some delays yesterday in getting DIY gangs body put together. Um, nothing on his end, you know, for his body. It's all sitting here. Everything's here, but um, one simple part, which is the front core support body mount. Um, it's a three piece kit, which is right here these little guys that's the only thing out of that entire shipment that didn't show up with his but uh, in the meanwhile we're gonna use that one until we get his situated so that way it doesn't slow us down at all but anyways yesterday got a little crazy so we were gonna be building two bodies side by side for cool content just to have these things just being pieced together day by day so floor floor you know quarters quarters you know and uh that's what we were starting to do yesterday so this is what we were working on moving the um firewall over for the coyote swap so if you guys don't remember this was going over here and we're gonna replace i know it's gonna be so we're just swapping everything so this is gonna go right here and this is gonna go right here and the reason why we do that is to make plenty of clearance for the steering column with the big new coyote engine that thing is massive it's wide and yeah it does not fit so that's the easy fix and if you guys want to watch the full video of how we do that um, click the link above and that video right there will show you guys exactly what we do we also have to modify the front wheel wheel, driver wheel wheel. I'm gonna cut that down inch and a half. That way everything moves over. You gotta move the steering column over. Obviously you gotta move over the wheel well. So that being said, yesterday, while I was working on the firewall modification for Jose at D DIY Gang, um, Chris called me over here and said, Jared, hey, we're missing a firewall assembly for the second body. So, walked over here, no big deal. You know, we'll get one ordered. And we started going through, if you guys don't remember, all the boxes that were here. And there were a ton of things missing, ton of things that were duplicated, and a ton of things that we had that we did not need, which is all right here. And this is what we have left. So, <laughs> we need front fenders, a door, a bunch of other stuff. So. We're talking with the supplier right now to figure out what we need to have sent to us still and what is going to be sent back and what where we're going to get the other parts and source from so anyways that was the nightmare yesterday it took chris and i like three three hours or so to get it all situated but we're back on track so i'm just waiting for chris to get here we're going to get back at getting this uh we're going to pull this tape all off get it all spot welded in ground down and then hopefully i can get most of this started and finished before he gets here because that's what we're going to be doing next getting the firewall assembly all put together so anyways guys i'm going to get to it so stay tuned couldn't help to see what cool stuff you're doing over here oh man you're trying hard aren't you <laughs> so just punching these out for all these pieces how they fit together like this for the four now and this other side is what Jared's been working on. So everywhere where I'm punching is the firewall side, not the interior side. So we'll do all of our welding from that side. Um, and then this piece, so it's not always the lips. We're not always punching the lips because on this one, it goes like that. So I'm actually gonna be punching right through here to be welding from the firewall side. So if you guys wanna see, I'll show you how this unit works. I don't know why it leaks. I think it's that fitting, that little pivot point. Yeah, I haven't been all fix it. So, pretty simple, you slide it in there, pop the chunk out. So. Now honestly, the swivel pisses me off. <laughs> Cause we try to like twist it to pull it out. Oh yeah. It's the same thing when I was uh, painting in the in the, booth, the booth when that thing that. swivels. Right, so if this is gonna be now going like that, we'll weld it from the backside. Way more gooder. 
and this is pretty much how the firewall will be sitting just like that and it'll be an easy spot to grind so we'll grind all these out and then all those out on the firewall side and have minimal in the passenger compartment and then the other thing i i need to think about for a second so this actually goes underneath the floorboard the floorboard sides over it yep. so i will be punching all of these out as well to weld from the bottom correct to weld from the bottom so there are going to be a few spots obviously where we're going to have to do a little plug welds from the top because we use self tappers to attach it to give us our first attachment point which i, I think was fairly fairly connects i'm going to need to use the ones with bigger heads this is just the, the the jug that was most full but yeah when we attach it obviously the self tapper is going to go all the way through but that's what we do. One thing though is we used to use the Harbor Freight punch tool and the hole is way too small. It's hard it to like weld. Eighth in, was it an eighth inch? Maybe a quarter? Three sixteenths, Three sixteenths, that's what I it was. I think this is a five sixteenths. Yep. So that difference makes a huge difference on how well you can actually get the, the, the weld penetration when you're welding. That's how we do it. Punch it all out and then run a couple self tappers and we actually won't be welding any of this until it's all assembled over there uh, to the floorboard. Well, while you have all of this going on, this is what I got going on. So you can see, obviously we gotta make some little adjustments, but that is the inch and a half. We have to make some little modifications in here. It's a little high, low, but we make those adjustments. I guess where it's perfect, you just uh, throw a couple tacks in. Yeah and then tweak it after. This fit way more gooder than the last time. Way more. Yeah, I think this is the first time we've ever done it before we assembled it. We usually do it while the firewall's all assembled. Yeah, yep. So I highly recommend, if you guys are gonna be doing this modification to do it like this. So when we did the blue Bronco, we did it in the Bronco, and I tell you, trying to get that angle while you're sanding and well because that originally was supposed to have 302 which requires no modifications correct and then it got switched to doing the coyote so i'm gonna throw some tacks on this line up these edges a little bit better than they are get to welding grind it down call it good so i'm gonna get to work Just getting done welding grind it all down Make her smooth, see what holes we need to touch up, and call it good. Yeah. Do the back side. So. Any tips, tricks for making this happen smoothly? Mm, patience. <laughs> it's a lot of work. A lot of little welds. You don't want to get it too hot. So I was actually using the heat to my advantage with this. You know, I was trying to get this stuff beat down, leveled back out a little bit, but. What do you know. mean by that? So once these, the, because they were a little, they're a little wavy still. They're not gonna be perfect, but so with once that it, heat, so once it was warm, you kind of helped yeah, out. Yeah, I had my little hammer tap and in place. A little tap, 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 level it all out, call it good. But when I first did my my '66 Bronco, no, we did not do it this way. I honed this piece out like three quarters of an inch, an inch, and it was a nightmare. So what happened was the steering column was angled. So there's two bolts that hold that uh, that steering column to the cow. Oh no, those two bolts did not line up because it was tilted. So now, move the whole thing over and you're good. So, yeah, that was a long time ago though. Yeah. I learned a lot since then. Yep. So I'm gonna get, grind all this down, flip it over, see how much I need to do on the back side, and go from there. Look at you just moving right along. Going good. So what are you doing? Okay, so mark this. We're gonna grind this little edge out right here. We're gonna take about a quarter inch off here, all the way down. So you can see right here, this side's a little bit too far out. That's why we just start with self tappers. And so we're going to make the adjustments, cut a little bit right there, cut a little bit right here, shift this in, and then that way it'll line up with this outside edge. And what we got going on over there, let's see a little Over gap. here is uh, similar but opposite. Mind you, this is the same problem we've had before. Same thing that kind of all Every we time. do. But we don't know when they fix it or when it's, so we're not gonna make the modifications before we put it together. And unfortunately, we have to put the whole firewall together like we just did before we know what little adjustments, tweaks need to be made. But it's no big deal because we just put together self tappers. So this side we have five self tappers, pop those out, pop this piece off, do a little trim, put it back in. This side there's four. So we're gonna pop these four out and this side, no cuttings needed. We're just gonna shift a little bit and then put the self tappers back in. Yep, yeah, because what you guys are looking for right here is that 
kicker panel to be yeah. completely flush with this upper or the vertical part of the firewall. But I mean, as it is right now, it's pretty rigid just from having a, uh, a few set of tappers right around the, the transmission tunnel there. Yep. So yeah, we're gonna pop these out, make the adjustments, put it back in, and then hopefully we'll be able to put the windshield support cowl in so that we can attach these kick panels and have them finalized before the end of the day today. I know you're a smart guy, but this one just threw me off. What the hell you got going on right here? So that kick panel is gonna line up right here. So I have my, my measurement of what it needs to be. And I clamped the square to here so we can just line it up here and I can take the measurement for the height <laughs> and we'll know we're perfect. So what's that uh, million dollar measurement? There's two of them, which one? <laughs> so it's 37 and a 16th to this edge. From back there, correct? From back here, which is where, if you've ever put one of these together, you'll know the, the rear quarters. I mean, there's one spot where they land. Um, so uh, 37 and a 16th seems to be the number that works best for us. And then the height is 21 inches from here to the, the top lip right here. And it's the same for both sides. Well, there it is, guys. That is the million dollar, well, the $2 million measurements right there. <laughs> wow. This is the first time of all the bodies I've seen this done. So I can that's that just last a, time? no, like, no. Oh, I used the big blue one yep, on the last Just to make one. the mark. But yeah, this makes me happy. So this is the most important part of this entire... Yeah, you want to think, the firewall doesn't matter. Nothing really matters until, except for this. Yep. As long as you get the rear quarters built, which we'll show you later, and they literally slide up, B-filler slides up, hits, and that's it. It's where it's going to be. And then this kick panel has to be set perfectly, and the A-pillar attaches to that, and then that's it. Doors. Door gap. Those are the gaps on this. Uh, for the most part. Yep. The grill is really what sets the hood gap, like all the rest of that. I mean, it's, this is what matters right here. And believe it or not, this is what lines up the, the windshield cowl and all the rest of that, which then puts your windshield straight and everything else. So this, this square right here, most important thing on the whole Bronco. That being said, Let's when you get it. this thing back together, I know DIY gang wants their body. Guys, I'll just tell you right now how excited I am to see this. Oh look, those holes even line up too. I think that's first. We gotta pop these off the edges. Oh. In the wrong spot. All right guys, let's probably put the camera down. Getting excited, look, getting a little excited, huh? Yep. A little too soon for that. Yep. This has gotta be a record. Mind you guys, we're in like maybe a day's worth of work. You know this why? Thing. Because yesterday was a hell of a day. Think oh. about what happened yesterday. Oh yeah, I know. This is payback. So just before he puts this in, you guys, if you haven't seen another video. Okay, stop working. Sure's got something <laughs> to say. Most people spot or they drill these out, this front lip. Well, because it's easier, because you can use a little kachunk, whatever tool, like we duped did all these with, right through here. So the Jerry decided to go the hard way and drill it here, so you can just weld it from the back side, so there's no grinding to do. No grinding, zero grinding. Because you can't see it, no reason to grind it. Yep. Which, reminder, we're not grinding anything on this one. Still. And same thing within here, super clean. Everything's, all the spot welds are being done from the bottom side, so. Yeah, the only, the only things you'll see on this side is where we put the self-tappers, because obviously yep. they go through both sides. Yep. Yep, just a little trick for you guys. What do we got left today? We're gonna put this in. Yep. And we're not welding anything. No. So. And this is why, guys, this is why we are not welding. So this hole is supposed to line up right here. And that's, obviously you can see, moves. But the second you weld that, you're done. <laughs> so. Well, there's, a, there's these little brackets. So once this is in place, it actually goes from here to there. And it gives it that support. Oh, the four piece cowl set. Actually, no, it doesn't go from here. It goes from the A pillar. Correct. Yep. To somewhere. Yep. So we're leaving all that for there. But yeah, <laughs> we generally don't weld anything until everything else has been attached to it. Obviously, if it's gonna, if it's gonna be buried, we have to weld it. But uh, self tappers, some clamps. I mean, we have probably what, 40 of them? Yeah. <laughs> 40 of the little ones and yeah. even more big ones. And that's the reason why. Uh, self tappers and clamps. And that's how this is all assembled right now. And to be honest, it's pretty sturdy. Yeah, this is real sturdy. You guys saw me earlier standing in here before we even put this together, so. Well, let's put this in. Uh, we'll have that aligned. We can temporarily throw the A pillars in. 
Yeah. But we're not going to finalize those until the rear quarters are done and we can adjust the doors. Yeah. We'll get this put in and see where we're at. Everything's clamped. We have uh, some self tappers holding it in in different spots. Obviously, you know, there are a few gaps that we're going to squeeze up when we go to weld, but for what it needs to be, but this is one piece. It's solid. In total, about four hours. We have the whole firewall assembled. It just needs the, the welding to be done. We did all the drilling here so we can attach that and there'll be a no grind finish since this side is would be visible when we yeah. grind. makes me so happy yeah and that's that, honestly like this is the only change that we've done from what we've done previously is drilling this instead of this and we have drilled the floor from the top we've done that before though yep so that's something that's something that we learned along the way of hiding them as much as possible yep. and then we ended up deciding to do it on this one honestly we try to use the whole punch air tool as much as possible because it's easy so right there like through here it's really easy just, cut, 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 just pop the holes all the way through but then you have to grind it and do the rest yep. of that so then the day this is well and then the, the one other big trick that we've learned through doing these uh just so you guys know is we use 023 wire and it is a specific wire made for sheet metal and it's an easy grind i think it's made it's by auto e body auto body esob esob, ESOB wire yeah wire we really like that. It holds nice and all the rest of it doesn't seem to be weak in any way, but what's nice is it grinds easier than the metal that it's attaching. So you don't get those waves. Yeah, yep. So you're just taking off that rather than sometimes you make a big old pothole where you're trying to grind. Th that doesn't happen. One thing that he hasn't mentioned, these two oh, they're important. screws. Get them lined up, get them put in, because uh, it'll help keep everything where it needs to be. And there's another one over there. Yeah, there's one on each side. This, those two screws, guys, hold this entire firewall and cowl area completely square. If this is able to go into that little nut, because it's like a little back, double-sided, I don't even know, what, it, what do you call those little things? Like a little nut it's clip? Like snap, nut, nut clip, snap. Something like that? Well, okay, so with what he just said, there's pretty much two things that are really important when you're trying to get this firewall connected to this floor. There are the measurements that we gave you earlier, the, the 37 and the 16th and 21. Which is there to here. And then the 21 is from here to the top to there. So, with, so that gets those kick panels put right in the right spot of where they need to be. Then as far as the rest of this goes, just put it together. You know, whatever works for you. But where that kick panel is, we know that that's in the right spot. So if you can get this bolted together, which aligns all the rest of everything, you know that this is correct. That's gonna keep your, because your windshield mounts right here, bolts in right here. That means, or not your windshield, your hood. Uh, and then your windshield is gonna be mounted up into here. So it makes sure that all of that is square where it needs to be. And it also puts these kick panels in the right spot for mounting your A-pillar so you have your door gap set correctly and in the right place. And so those aprons. two things are the most important part because if you get, the, if those are off in any way, it will not go together right. Oh yeah, you're shimming your hood. For you're, yeah, sure. you're gonna shim the hood on one side or the other or you're gonna have issues with your door fitment. You know, I've seen them where they're way too close and guys have to shave the edge of the door off which it's a rolled edge, so now you have to go through and spot load all the way down. Don't, do, just don't, just don't. <laughs> Follow those Check two Check those things. holes. <laughs> get, the, get the kick panel set in the right position. Again, I'll see those measurements. 37 and 1 16th and 21. So those two measurements will put this where it needs to be and bolt this together. Once that's done and everything goes, if you need to trim, if you need to shift, and you need to squeeze, cut, whatever, do what you need to do. But once you do that, now you know you have a good base start for getting this whole firewall and the whole Bronco put together. We're gonna get going with the rear quarters probably in the next step. When we do that, we're gonna show you how to assemble those the correct way. And when those set in place, you're pretty much ready to bolt doors on yep. and your door gaps are gonna be correct. It's actually not difficult, not as difficult as most people make it out to be. We've got the quarter panels being assembled today. Chris yep. has already got a head start on everything. Well, this is the trick. So we assemble upside down so we can get everything clamped down to a flat surface. So your top of your rail is gonna be nice and flat. And then over on the other side here, uh, I need to grab a, a straight edge. We'll throw a straight edge on here and make sure all of this is perfectly flat. 
you know, make it nice. And right on the other side, just weld it up, call it a day. Deal. So, obviously you guys know, we were getting the front clip and everything all done. Well, yeah, this is what we got going on. Somehow, guys, this is the first one that he's done. Well, no, second one. Second one that he's done outside of my 66. But he acts like he's done like a hundred of them. This is an electrician for you. I just know how it works. It goes together. <laughs> we did it. It was perfect. We'll do it so, again. So, but yeah, I know what he was talking about with this 2x4 right here. Yeah, if you don't keep this lined up this whole time with something, a clamp, you're going to lose that line. So, I think he's got it under control. Always do. <laughs> All right, guys, we get back to work. Making progress. Let's look at the tailgate post, stake post. Mm -hmm. Got the quarter panel, lower quarter panel on. Just a test bit right now. It's just clamped from the back side, guys. Okay. And we'll slide that in. Start from up here. Slide it down. Get these holes drilled. Back here, down here. All down there. Get it welded up. Get it all in place and we gotta put that b pillar or the b pillar in we got the spot welds you can see right here said normally guys we we grind these all down flush smooth but, but not uh, for jose yeah he wants content yep no. we're just letting him do the the easier things on the build hope you guys are enjoying this i know it's a lot of work chris has actually done this one almost by himself don't i usually <laughs> i don't know about that one everybody knows they watch the tapes <laughs> I think the last time we did a body, you said the same thing when we were doing the blue one. You said the same thing. Like, who's always on camera doing stuff? Sounds like there's a pattern here. Well, the thing is, <laughs> I always tell him, hey, grab the camera when I'm doing stuff. I did and earlier. <laughs> and he was cutting on stuff, and I, I, I taped it. So we'll know at the very end of the day how much he grabs the camera, how much I grab the camera. It's not because I'm not doing anything. He just doesn't like to tape. That's it. We need a camera guy. We do. We need a camera guy because this gets it's tough going back and forth. If anyone wants to come out and tape it for free. For free. We're in Northern California. Yep. <laughs> if, you want, if you want to edit the videos too, come right on out. <laughs> what do you think, Remy? Well, yeah. No, she's yep. too busy crapping inside the shop. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to get back at it. You happy now? I <laughs> am. I got myself a camera guy. So he's got his step stool out. He gives me the short jokes, but he can't even reach in here to weld. It's actually a super tight spot. Got to lean in from the top. You guys can see kind of Jared's angle there. Get all that welded. Oh. Inside this B pillar, there's that little moving, this little moving threads. It allows that striker to move back and forth to, to adjust. But there's a little ear on this piece on both of them. You can see it more. There's no, probably hard to see in there. But anyways, when Chris was trying to get this B pillar slid in, it was hitting the B pillar, was it? yeah, it was hitting the B pillar, so I just had to shave those little ears off. So if you guys are having a problem getting this B pillar on, take those little adjustable threads out, grind the little ears off in here, and this piece will slide right on. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about when you get to it. <laughs> yeah, because the issue was this wasn't able to push in and line up straight like it needs to. For some reason, this always lips on every single one we do, too. Yep. I think it's just a stamping issue. Yeah. But it's all good. Get this all welded in and get to it. Drop this thing on that Bronco body. Side number two. Bruno Moss. There you go, guys. Got the driver's side quarters on. I'm not gonna lie. Kind of jealous that it's going to a, another person. This is this is probably one of the cleanest ones that we've done as far as lining it everything. But uh, you're welcome, Jose, at DIY Gang. Now this is the easy side. Honestly, this is the first one I've ever done that had black. Right. Instead of that silver coating. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with all this. 
you guys probably wouldn't even caught on to that but just so you guys know this what a five foot it's probably five foot Something like that. two by four this is what we use for my 66 frame it literally is like sent from the gods himself for this build it keeps everything straight keeps it all square you know this the the upper quarter to the tail light bucket well, and yep yeah yeah the ground sits right there so if you guys are gonna be throwing this stuff together highly suggest you grab yourself some two by four steel don't need a lot you know grab a 10 foot stick and have some extras but anyways we're gonna get going with this and we'll keep you guys updated how's it looking yeah moving right along got a million clamps in here just start working our way up slowly getting all these lines straight so ooh, it's hot got some manipulation to do up there yeah it's gotta get tweaked a little bit look at that nice straight body lines all in all it's coming along pretty easy like jared said earlier this is supposed to be the easy side we actually remembered to grind all of the spots where the tack where the spot welds are all going so we're getting a nice little cream or clean zzz, not we're that pop 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right guys got both sides put on looking good they're both level best part about this we haven't put the floor in yet that has been a beautiful thing believe it or not Let's see what chris is working on huh. rear floor support or bed support i should say so obviously this goes right here ground all those down for the spot welds look at that beautiful i'm gonna get to welding this real quick get this bed what in happened here so either you ground in the wrong spot or you're talking talking the wrong I don't see I don't see nothing. You don't see it? I don't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, let me get the welding on this. Anything else to say? Nope. Any other tips, tricks? Don't be lazy. Just do it. <laughs> All right. Get back to work. We got going on right now 58 inches almost 58 almost probably got some loose in that strap <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of stuff going on right now yeah, we're just getting squared up make sure the tailgate fits so the, the downside with doing these tubs is they leave here without the most important parts tailgate doors hood so these body gaps have to be perfect because we can't adjust them you know once they're shipped off and jose gets it well we're going off of measurements instead of just putting the tailgate in and making the adjustments hold our gaps and then weld it so now we're just measuring it and then welding so we're using ratchet poles to push out and actually straps to keep the tension tight so there's the because everything's still floppy and then we'll brace it all up move on to the next thing gotta get these corner pieces in right here ready oh yeah go for it <laughs> so anyways just want to give you guys a quick update how this is all going down almost there almost all right guys we're gonna get back at it all right guys we are back at it well i should say i'm back at it today chris isn't gonna be here obviously it's the next day so yesterday we were able to get all of this measured up gaps are good that way the the guys over at diy can drop their tailgate in so what we say have pressure coming in and then pressure going out that way it doesn't move at all i'm gonna brace this up run some flat strap in here run it over there and then use these two slots down there for uh for some screws get this all braced up that way it doesn't go anywhere during shipping so i'm gonna get at this real quick shouldn't take too long really hope you guys are enjoying the channel i know it's been a lot of hard work and we still got a lot of stuff in the making you know i'm working all day here and work until about 2 3 a.m right now on the, the other stuff we got going on for mbi motorsports i hope you guys are really enjoying this stuff we enjoy doing it um, i wish we could post a little bit more it's just a lot of repetitive stuff that you guys probably just don't want to keep seeing so anyways we're gonna get at this hopefully we can get most of this wrapped up by this week so the only thing we need to do i'll finish this today we gotta put the the corner supports in right here um put the a pillar on I'll come back over here real quick get this front clip 
I'll mount the windshield put in, but all of this stuff that's left, it's pretty easy besides the A pillars is gonna be the next, the next real big issue. So anyways, I'm gonna get back to work and we will see you guys soon. All right guys, I'm calling it a wrap for today. See so you got it all braced up. It's all good to go. This now, the whole rear end is ready to go. So we won't have to make any adjustments. We do have to obviously weld, spot weld these all down in here. Yeah, so sometimes we leave these open or you know, not completely sealed up just so guys can make final adjustments with their roll cage, but I think we're pretty much good for this one. So yeah, now we just gotta get the A pillar attached, windshield, front clip. But as far as the, you know, the rear portion of this Bronco, we're pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna get out of here and I will see you guys tomorrow and we can get this thing all tidied up. So we'll see you then. Quick update, Chris got all these floor supports and the corner supports in. And you heard him say in other videos that make sure you have a lot of clamps on hand and you can see. Wasn't joking. There are clamps everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> What do we have, like 20 of the little ones? I think there's 20, 20 or 30 oh. of them. And obviously you got the ones all up here still. You do not want to weld anything. You guys gonna start one of these, stop by Harbor Freight, grab yourself 20 or 30 of these bad boys and get to clamping. But we're close. I'm gonna get underneath this thing, start welding it. Oh, look at this guys. My own little, my mid gun chaser. What are we doing today? All of it. So start welding up the firewall here. And I guess we can weld this too. Yeah, we gotta weld this. B-pillar. Oh, boy. Oh. oh, yeah, yep. We just gotta finish weld the whole front area of this body. And then we'll start working on the front clip and- But we might wanna weld this before that, that we have easy access. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're gonna do. Well, back at it. Yes, sir. Getting stuff done. So I've got the whole front clip put back on. Not put back on, put on. Weld it up. We have these temporarily put in place. We do need to do a little trimmage right here. So the, the fender, because these Trimage. are a little bit long. Is that a new one? It is, okay. it is. Got the front body mounts in and the additional one right there for the battery box. So, so far it's doing really well. So yeah, when we come back next time, we're going to trim these down a little bit, move them over, weld them in, and then start working on the A pillars on both sides here, getting those in place. And then after that, what is there? You know, the windshield frame and the front wheel wells. And we gotta modify that front we're mo yeah, wheel we're well. Yeah, we're gonna modify this one for the Coyote. Just like when we move this over, uh, that inch and a half, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So yeah, we're gonna move this over, finish the A pillar, and then it'll be time, uh, windshield frame, and it'll be time for us to do a rotation on this, on the ghetto rotisserie, to do a little <laughs> bit more welding around the bottom side. Yep. And then at that point, it's gone. Here we go. So we threw the doors, or the door and the fender on just to check our fitment. Uh, we needed them on there also for placement of the A-pillar. As you can see, everything's perfect. No adjustments have been made inside the hinges. They're literally just set there. But you can see how close everything is. This gap over here is a little bit larger than this gap, which is just a couple shims that need to be placed inside the door. And the rocker, actually all it has right now is a couple clamps and a couple self-tappers holding it in place but it's perfect. What you guys do on these for your adjustment is you can see where there's spot welds in here. You drill those out, make your adjustment for what it needs to do to get this bottom gap lined up perfectly. Uh, that has to be done on every single one, but uh, that goes for your specific doors of how yours work. I think this rocker's ready for the final weld. And then over here, we have the, uh, we're ready to put the inner fenders in and Gonna finish off getting this welded in place and then get the inner fender put on. That'll be what's left on this side. So the rocker and the inner fender. And then on that side, we need to finish off the A pillar, which is this support back here. A very smart five-year-old one time told me that the strongest thing is a triangle. So this is a triangle, <laughs> makes it strong. There's a piece that we need to weld in here and that's why we set the doors. We set the doors, press it tight for a tight, tight gap and then we weld that piece in to make sure it's nice and secure. So we're almost done. Very close. <laughs> yeah, A pillars and whatnot is the most work out of this whole thing. All right, well, we're gonna get back to work. All right. All right, guys, making some progress on DIY Gang's Bronco tub slash body. I was able to get this bent, so we shortened this up. Inch and a half. Can you hear me? <laughs> Anyways, shortened it up inch and a half, bent that lip down, come over here. 
You guys didn't see it, but set this in place. Got that marked. We'll start punching holes here. Get that spot welded in. That side will be a little bit easier. And Chris is over here just knocking shit out. Got the rockers in. I told him an hour and a half we need to be done. Yeah, this one just has one cell tapper in. Fitting up good though. Yep. That's all we have left. Rockers, wheel well. You know, touch it up with all the little yeah, spot welds. Little pieces in. Weld these in and then rotate it and finish weld the bottom. Yep. I didn't weld the bottom with the rockers, just the tops. Okay. So we'll have to kind of pinch it in and weld it. Get this thing out of here and start on body number two next week. Hopefully this week. Hopefully. Yep. We'll Something see. Like that. So anyways, guys, we'll get back to work. What do we do? We need to get a rotisserie on. The and what? Ghetto rotisserie. Oh, okay. I thought that's what you said. Ghetto. <laughs> It works really good though. Simple design, it's got a 45, 45. And if you want to get real crazy, throw that thing up on the, the 90. But it just bolts right into the jig table that we have here. And this thing's gonna rotate full 45 degrees so we can get underneath this thing and weld it. Just so you guys know, we do have a full rotisserie outside, but it's a pain in the butt trying to get set up when, yeah, actually someone, we're not, we're not doing a tailgate. That last time, they're like, just get a rotisserie. We have one. Yeah. But this is easier. Yeah, this took what? Two minutes? Two minutes for us to throw them on? Yeah. yeah, compared to leveling out and all that crazy stuff with rotisseries. And we have that that big, uh, the rotator, that little pivot point on the rotisserie that makes it to where you can't open and close a tailgate if you were gonna yeah, install one. You can call it a donut or a meatball or something. Yeah, we're gonna get this thing set back down on the gutter rotisserie, get this thing flipped over on its side. We're gonna weld the bottom of the rocker panels and the yeah, underside the these, that, yeah the bottom of these little four panels yeah, the wheel well and that's pretty much it yeah and we'll be done and jose you come get your body well you want to explain i'm sure we've explained this before yeah i did so we just threw the hinges on here real quick just again just to kind of test it one more time because we never test it with the rocker on here so it's not adjusted on this side perfectly for the height of what we have for the fender and all that you can see how this gap is way off compared to what it was before so you can see like every time you're starting with something like this and getting it the way we had it before and you can see across the bottom here this gap varies i mean dramatically and that's part of the door just being in the wrong spot um and then part of it also is this rocker well before it goes before it goes any further this is level so it's level here at the bottom. Obviously that's your main body line. And then when we mocked it up with that's the gonna front say. fender. I was gonna say these rockers have three, three different attachment points. One already comes from the factory where they put them right here. Um, and they're wrong. Oh, It'd be better if they, no, they're all wrong. It'd be better <laughs> if they came in two pieces. So this is supposed to sit right here, you know, for the, the, the weather seal, that whole deal. The top is right where it's supposed to be. And the bottom, it pinches in and goes to the bottom of the, the floor pan there. Now this one right here, this is the one that can be adjusted to match your door perfectly. These are not Jose's doors. These are our doors uh, and Jose's doors may be slightly different. So we're not making any of those adjustments. We'll have to do that. When it gets how, to does he, side, how does he do that? Go to all these little spot welds, drill them out and it can, we can pull it up, push it down, do whatever you need to do to adjust that gap. We usually just take a floor jack, put it up underneath, have the door exactly where we want it, have all those drilled out and then uh, jack and adjust come down here the self tapper put it in place weld it up double check it all again make sure it's good and then that's it so that's a trick to set in your bottom body line on your door well it's just the yeah just the rocker to get it lined up with the bottom of the door so it's not that bad so anyone that you know gets these tubs delivered to them like diy is gonna have done with this one and you guys freak out about this bottom body or that body gap because i've seen so many times on facebook you know the guys are the fitment on the bottom of the door is all off. So it's everybody who wants to go cheap. Yeah. They, they think that they're getting a better deal because they can go buy doors for 300 bucks or they have some sitting or their buddy has some or whatever. So they just get a tub and then they realize, oh, it doesn't all perfectly line up. Well, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. There's a big difference obviously between, between buying what a $10,000 tub and a $15,000 body. Yeah. That $5,000 gets you all of those adjustments made for all of those body panels. It is complete. It's 100% done. Jose's just doing a tub, so he's gonna have to make those adjustments on his. And it's not bad, you know, it's what, 10 spot welds, you know, spot weld not or- even that, like seven yeah. or eight. So. And they're little, they're easy to drill out. Yeah, and you can see them all. It's probably hard on camera, but you can see all the little yeah. divots. So, you know, just to clarify, get that all out, why these guys hate buying tubs, this is why. So there's still extra work to be well, done, just, just like Chris cheap. said. You're not, 
you know, you can go cheap, you can do it that way. You're like, oh, I saved myself $500 because I bought the tub and the doors and the fenders and everything all separately. Yeah. Okay, cool. You saved yourself 500 bucks, but you're only going to take another 50 hours mm -hmm. to get all your body lines perfect because it's the first time you've done it and we've done it way more than that. Yeah, you know, just to save yourself a door, tailgate, grill, and hood. All the work is in those doors, the A pillar, B pillar, and that bottom body gap. So we just wanted to get that out there, show you guys how to fix that. Super easy, but Jose, if you see this, when you get your doors put on here and you see, oh my God, it's a half inch off or eighth inch off, whatever, that's why. So anyways, back at it. All right, guys, that's a wrap for DIY gangs Bronco body. Yep, come get it. It's done. It's done. It's done. I don't want it here anymore. It's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all done. There it is. Our part is done. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, Jose, you owe Jose's us. wife. You owe us. <laughs> Chris says you owe us. No, you guys, uh, it's been fun. But we will see you guys on the next video.